Hello, my name is Ren Yod Singh and I'm a software engineer at Mirantis. In this video, I'll go over installing Mirantis Kubernetes engine on Google Cloud Platform. Mirantis Kubernetes engine or MKE provides enterprises with the easiest and fastest way to deploy cloud native applications at scale on private clouds, public clouds, and on bare metal. With the release of MKE 3.6, we are introducing support for GCP. To install MKE, we'll use a tool that Mirantis provides called Launchpad. Launchpad makes it easy to install MKE on public or private clouds. See Mirantis documentation for more information on Launchpad. Mirantis also provides example data form scripts as a baseline to automate the infrastructure for cloud providers such as AWS, Azure, and GCP. These Terraform scripts can be found on GitHub at Mirantis slash launchpad. For this demo, we'll use these Terraform scripts for GCP along with launchpad and Terraform to install MKE. You will also need a GCP account to authenticate Terraform. Instructions for that are available alongside these scripts. Okay, let's start by cloning the launchpad repository to get the Terraform scripts for GCP. I'll switch over to my terminal window. On the left hand side here, you'll see the commands that I will use during this demo. On the right is my terminal. Oh, and by the way, I've already installed Launchpad and Terraform on this machine. Okay, let's clone the repository and then CD into the GCP example. I'm going to copy the command from here uh, and in this directory you'll see a bunch of files including terraform.tfvars.example. This can be used as a starting point to configure the infrastructure. So let's copy this file to terraform.tfvars and then change some of the variables in this file. Let's change the cluster name to GCP demo. Let's keep one manager node. We don't need any MSR nodes. We'll use two worker nodes. And let's also change the admin password. And let's specify MKE version to install with MKE underscore version variable. Uh, let's set it to 3.6.0. In this file, we are overriding the default values which are defined in the script. Now we are ready to create the infrastructure in GCP. Let's initialize the Terraform with Terraform init. And then run Terraform apply to create the resources. Type in yes to continue. Now Terraform is creating the resources in GCP. This will take a few minutes, so let's fast forward to the end. All right, the required infrastructure has been created in GCP. We'll take a look at GCP console later. Now run Terraform output command to generate launchpad.yaml file. This is the file that launchpad will use to install MKE. There's also a handy shell script to run all the Terraform commands we just ran. If we run this shell script now, there are no changes to apply. But if you change something in Terraform, running this shell script will apply those changes. Okay, we are now ready to install MKE. Let's edit the launchpad.yaml file to modify the install arguments for MKE. We'll enable GCP integration for Kubernetes by specifying the install flag cloud provider equals GCE. We also need to specify the MCR version. MKE 3.6 requires MCR version 20.10.13 or above. So let's specify that here. Now run launchpad apply to begin installation. This will take a couple of minutes. So let's fast forward again 
to the end. Okay, now the MKE cluster has been successfully installed. Let's go to the MKE admin UI from the URL provided here. The SSL error here is due to invalid certificate in our test cluster. We'll use the password that we set earlier. And here you'll see that the MKE cluster is running in a healthy state. If we navigate to the nodes in this cluster, we'll see three nodes, one manager and two worker nodes. And if we switch over to GCP console, we will see three VM instances running, one manager node and two worker nodes. Okay, now that the MKE is running successfully on GCP, I will demo the Google Cloud integration with our cluster. For that, we'll create a Kubernetes deployment and a service. Here is the YAML content for creating a deployment, a service, and a service account. The important part here is the service of type load balancer. When a service of type load balancer is created in Kubernetes, Kubernetes will try to create an external load balancer in the cloud provider it is running on. So if the GCP integration is working correctly, a new load balancer should be created in GCP for our service. I'll use the MKE admin UI to create this Kubernetes object in our cluster. So I'll copy the YAML content and switch over to our MKE console. Here, I can go to Kubernetes, create, and then create and create objects in the default namespace. Uh, again, we're creating a service account, a service, and a deployment. Okay, so all these three objects have been successfully created. Let's go to the new service that we just created. It is of type load balancer, but there's no external IP yet. Let's go to the GCP console and navigate to the load balancers. We'll see that the network load balancer has been created. And if you open that load balancer, we'll see that it's load balancing to all the three nodes in our cluster, which is what we expect. And if we switch over to MKE UI, we'll see that the service now has external IP address. And this extra and this IP address is same as the IP address of the load balancer. And if we navigate to this IP address, it is pointing to our sample service running inside of a cluster. Okay, now let's go back to our MKE UI and delete the Kubernetes service. And if you switch over to go GCP console and go to the load balancers, we should see this load balancer being deleted. And it's gone. So deleting the Kubernetes service also deleted the corresponding load balancer that was created.